Hey guys, so we're in that week between Christmas and New Year's where you really don't know what's going on, what time it is, what day it is. For me, this week is all about making plans for the new year. So I've been walking around, you know, seeing what needs to be done, making lists. I'm all about making lists. And then when I remember that I have a list, I can do the things on it. I had mentioned before that I want to button up a lot of the things that are going on up here in the cottage garden, or the cottage really, putting a door here getting the windows in, those tasks or jobs that are kind of sticking out in the different areas that I've started and, you know, come pretty far on. Uh, but there are things up here, like I just mentioned, that uh, need to be done to finish this. So I'm thinking within a week or so, this is gonna be a functioning door. I won't get started on that today. Oh, look at you two. Best decision ever was to build this run around this stump. They have such a good time, you know, getting on top of it, digging underneath it, and it's just a really great playground for them. So I want to address really quickly, I think there may have been some confusion in the last video where I was talking about starting to do shorts, short form videos. Just so you know, that did not mean at the expense of these long form videos. Uh, we're still planning on going forward with our Tuesday and Friday videos on Next Level Homestead. The shorts would be in addition to. I was really surprised. I don't love watching shorts. I don't watch a lot of shorts on YouTube. To me, the way to get into them is a little cumbersome. And a lot of times uh, they are shorter, condensed versions of longer videos that have already been done. So you're just kind of watching the highlights of a different video. That's not what I'm planning for my shorts. You know, when I'm doing things around here, when I see uh, fun stuff with the animals, sometimes it's just a short little snippet and they don't actually make it into the long form video because they just don't follow whatever the storyline happens to be. So that would be my plan for shorts. Content exclusive to shorts that are just too short to put into a long form video. So let me know, those of you who hate shorts, um, are those the reasons you hate them? And would you watch that type of material from us? I know a lot of you said, you know, that's what I have Instagram or TikTok for. So that brings me to the next thing. Should I start a TikTok? for this channel. Let me know. I've never done TikTok. I've never been on TikTok. I mean, I know, you know, it's all the rage. Now, you know, I am on Instagram for Next Level Gardening and I've kind of been doing, but actually I've kind of been posting more for Next Level Homestead on there. Uh, I don't feel right turning that into just Next Level Homestead, like changing the name because it's got quite a following and they came there uh, for Next Level Gardening. So I was thinking about starting an Instagram account for Next Level Homestead exclusively. So please in the comments, let me know if you're on Instagram and if you would follow a Next Level Homestead Instagram versus just lumping my stuff on Homestead into Next Level Gardening. One more little piece of uh, business before we get into the regular video stuff. On the last video, we did our Christmas baking and I put a couple of recipes on there. Then a lot of you said, well, I had never heard of the peanut butter blossoms and the magic bars, which is amazing to me. But I also saw that there was people from other countries who had never heard of them. So I thought, well, maybe it's an American thing or maybe it's not as widespread as I thought. So I'm going to have Emily put the recipes for those two in the description of this video. Now, the title of this video wasn't clickbait to get you to watch. Uh, over the last few days, uh, I noticed that Bella under her tail, between her legs, under her tail area, um, had been looking very dirty. And I thought it was because we had rain and she kind of sat maybe with her tail up and then just being protected under there from her tail and her all the hair she has on the butt. I thought it just was kind of remaining there. You know, she has that magic fur that everything just kind of sloughs off and she's just a white dog, brand new every day. But this wasn't happening. And then yesterday... Emily noticed that there was some, some blood back there. And so it immediately hit me, my baby girl's growing up. Yes, she is in fact in heat, um, or she has come into season as we saw online. Uh, we had never had a dog that wasn't spayed or, or neutered when we, well spayed if we're talking about girls, right? Uh, spayed when we got her. So this was a completely new thing. 
So we talked to Bella's breeder and she said that she needs to be kenneled for the next 20 days, 21 days since we saw the initial signs, I guess. So, so it's been probably four days. So anyway, whatever that math is, we'll look on the calendar. So unfortunately, this is the sad state of affairs that we're in right now. Hi, baby. So she's still her cheerful self. I don't know. Do you have cramps or anything like that? I don't know how it works for dogs. I know. It's so tough to be in here. It's tough to watch her be in here. <sighs> Such a sweet girl. I know you are. Problem is, if she's allowed out, um, even somebody trustworthy like Bella uh, could try to leave the property to go find a boy. Probably a most more likely scenario would be a boy dog coming in here and taking advantage of her. And even a coyote could do it. Can you imagine half Bella, half coyote babies? Weird. So I will be letting her out. We'll take her out on a leash. If, if we're in a confined area and I'm out here, I'm not super worried about that. But no, no bites. I am hopeful that this means she is growing up and is going to get out of her chewing and nibbling stage. We're definitely going to be having her out, especially on a leash, taking her around the perimeter so she can still keep up her territory marking and, you know, in that way, keeping Daisy safe because she's not going to be able to get down here to Daisy. So more vigilance on our part and just a waiting game, being patient for this 21 day period to be over. Now you might ask, why not just spay her? Uh, for giant breed dogs like Bella, um, the hormones that are involved that will no longer be involved once she is spayed help to develop her tendons, her joints, things that go haywire sometimes on a very large dog. So the thought is if you can, you know, hold off till they're about a year and a half, even two years, that would be the best way to do it. Uh, that is going to help them develop properly. So that's our goal. Um, just to do it, wait as long as possible. Apparently they go into heat every six months and then Bella was born in February. So in, you know, a couple months, uh, she'll be one and then she'll go into heat six months after that, six months after that. So really maybe just two more times. Um, and then we can have her spayed. Now that thought would change if she starts to, you know, become aggressive or try to leave multiple times. Um, then, you know, you might think about, why do you always turn my chair over? Hmm? Is there some kind of hidden meaning in that? You don't want me out here? Oh, huh? you got water all over your face. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So there are reasons why you might go ahead and spay uh, a dog like Bella for where the, the benefit of keeping her doesn't outweigh the risk, the benefit of keep, where the benefit of, you know, not spaying her early, where the benefit of not spaying her uh, before the two years outweigh, is, outweighed, is outweighed by the risks of doing so. Did that come out right? So anyway, for those of you who wondered, that's the line of reasoning behind why we're not spaying her yet. And we are under a no breeding clause that we signed when we bought her, so we, we aren't gonna be breeding her, so. You know, there's no reason to not spay here for that reason. So my little nursery out here, if you remember a few weeks back, I started the uh, ranunculus corms in this flat and they are ready at this point to be transplanted into the garden. So I know that that's not a job that buttons up things that I've already got started, but some things like that need to be done now because if you let them get much bigger, uh, it's going to stunt their growth trying to pull them out of there and get all their roots apart. So right now is the prime time to do that. And as I mentioned before, I'm gonna take all this Dusty Miller, everything that's in this raised bed here in front of the house, um, Dusty Miller is just gonna to be tossed in the compost. I'm gonna keep some of the color in here and, and move that probably up into the cottage garden. Amend the soil in here with some fresh compost. And then I'll probably plant a big thick stripe of the ranunculus down the middle. And I can't remember the, the variety offhand, so I'll put it on the screen. And then plant something low, like an annual just around the edge 
just to just to frame it in so it's a big mass of color surrounded by something you know nice and low so you can't see the the bases of the ranunculus so i am going to let bella out for that because i'll keep her right there with me and um get started <laughs> All right, so I just finished up planting all of the ranunculus in here. There's exactly 80 plants in here. I left a uh, space in the front to put a row of, I think what we're gonna go with, well, actually I know we're gonna go with it because I just ordered them, uh, pansies. It's a variety that, I'll put both the ranunculus picture and the pansy picture here on the screen so you can see uh, what they'll look like together. Um, I think it'll be nice, a nice blend of kind of pinky, mauve apricot, and I'll probably uh, have them in these pots as well, and maybe some up in some pots up the stairs of the cottage. So Bella's just been laying out here with me, so hopefully she can be just be laying out here with me while I do my work and just be in the kennel when I'm not here to oversee and during the night, of course. I'm actually thinking of finally taking this curtain, whatever that's called, off of the back uh, fence here, outside the inside of the cottage, for a couple of reasons. To give the rabbits more light and to give these trumpet vines more light. You know, they're, they're growing okay, but as you can see way down there, the ones who get light are much thicker. So do I take it down now? I don't know. Now the reason it's up is for privacy, I guess. Uh, you can see it starts right there behind the uh, fire thorn, goes all the way behind the cottage, and then all the way to right there. Uh, however, <laughs> there's nothing that goes that way or that way. So I'm thinking what I could do is take it down from there 
all the way to over somewhere behind the run there's a split in it yeah right there so i could take down from there all the way down i can leave this for some privacy and if i wanted to the one i take down i could start right here and take it on down that way and by my measurements it should go to about right there so that would actually give us a little bit more privacy on this side <sighs> do i do it now i mean i want to give those trumpet vines and the rabbits as much light in the winter as possible seeing that there's less light already um and then maybe in the spring they'll just really start taking off growing the trumpet vines not the rabbits Oh, what the heck, let's just do it. So it definitely brightens up the background of the chicken run. I'm wondering if I want to go to the trouble. I probably don't, but you can see there's about six feet between the end of that, whatever that shade thing is, and the gate. And there's about six feet between the end of the shade thing and the corner. I could move the whole thing six feet and take that to the gate. That would look nicer, but is it worth the work? I say not today, but it might happen. Let's go inside the cottage and see what's going on. In the morning, there'll be a lot more sun directly streaming in here, but just having that off, even though there's no direct sun coming in in the afternoon, it just makes it feel lighter in here because you can just see light instead of blackness. I think I like it. So yeah, I would say by summer, you know, a lot more of this trumpet vine will have filled in here. And that'll look nice. The wide shot doesn't look too much different, except through the door you can see <laughs> the hill and the light behind. But that door will be there soon enough. It's the next morning, and uh, ranunculus are looking good. I actually came out last night, and uh, let's see what's wrong with this one. That one's been eaten on by something. The rest look pretty good. I put some sluggo out yesterday uh, after I was done planting. And then I came out last night and squashed a few of the snails that were there. But all in all, looks pretty good. Can't wait to see them blooming. Bella's kind of a different girl this morning. You are. I let her out to do my morning chores with me and she just wasn't paying attention. She was off sniffing everywhere. Um, it was just an off morning for her. So I don't know if this is part of the process or not, but yeah, she's different and I'm kind of worried. So uh, I'm gonna keep her close by today. We'll see what happens. So I think the next thing I'm gonna do is go to get some wood for the door on the cottage and uh, i picked out a color it's kind of a it's a blue a light blue i don't know what you call it i have the swatch i'll have to find it somewhere but i think it'll look nice with the rest of the cottage and how the planting scheme is back out here to the little nursery i bought these um two lanicera geez, probably a year ago uh, and took all these cuttings from them i need to take some more but i now know what i'm going to do with them since the cottage was practically finished, everyone's been asking how I'm going to fill in the space all along the bottom. And I was kind of wondering that myself. I've gone back and forth uh, doing brick like the chimney, doing like a, a, a cobbly stone look, and I haven't been able to settle on one. Well, hardscape wise. But what I'm gonna do is take those Lanicera cuttings, and Lanicera, uh, I forget the, the variety, I'll put it on the screen but it uh, is, a, is a very close boxwood substitute, except it grows a lot faster than boxwood. 
And so I think what I'm going to do is just put a nice boxwood hedge. I'll probably finish, you know, a foot in from the door on either side, but then a boxwood hedge or a or a hedge all the way around the bottom, just about a foot tall, just enough to cover that blank area and probably a foot wide. So a very narrow, perfect boxwood border all the way around the front of the cottage. That'll serve two purposes. Uh, number one, it'll close in that space so you can't see it. But at the same time, it's going to allow for airflow in and out. And since we've got chickens and rabbits in there, airflow is always a good idea. And it's a foggy morning, but definitely sunnier in here than with that black fabric on the fence. And the bunnies are getting along so well, I haven't seen any fighting at all. Have I, Grams? Been good girls. And that is so awesome because now they can have that entire hutch, both of them, to do all the running around that they want. I've been cleaning up and pulling weeds out here in the cottage garden. Uh, what I'm gonna do is actually start a series on next level gardening over the next, well, probably starting late January, uh, early February is a series on how to start a garden from scratch. You know, a lot of people are first timers and they're just not sure where to begin. Um, this is pretty much a blank space, blank canvas that I can now start a vegetable garden on uh, and take anyone who's interested along on that process. So if you're not subscribed to Next Level Gardening, make sure you do that. That's gonna do it for this video, you guys. Bella and I are gonna keep doing the best we can getting through this 20 days. It's not gonna be easy. We'll see you next time.